Hola, YouTube. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're practicing that self-care. Um, let me move this at least out of the way so I can eat well. <laughs> eat well, keep all my, my stuff out here. Let me make some bonjour. Uh, ¿Cómo se va? Hola, ¿cómo están? Ojalá que estén bien. Uh, bienvenidos, buenas tardes, buenos días. Good afternoon, good evening. Juravon, good nacht. Um, welcome to the stream. Hey, we're doing Nisei. Yes, I'm eating Hot Pockets. Yes, it's late. Yes, my throat hurts, so I might not be as overly energetic. <laughs> but I just want to go ahead and say, hey, remember to practice that self-care. Hey, if you're watching this and you've watched some of the other videos and you guys like sort of the conversations that we're having, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe, guys. Like 60% of people that watch the YouTube content in general aren't subscribed, at least for like my channel in the least. None of the videos are monetized, but it helps a lot to see that like people are interested in the content that we're making. Come join us on Twitch. We stream every Monday and or every Monday, every Sunday and Friday. Um, and there's some special dates, of course, in between that are always announced on the Discord. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to be eating throughout this. Just a heads up. Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> Let me guess. Hold on. Let me guess. He's going to go and sexually harass this younger looking character because that's exactly who he is. And even though he was talking about like, you know, the previous episodes, <laughs> bro, this guy is like, oh, you want to talk about Rudy is being bad. Hey, yo, we can, we can look at some of these actions and be like, of course. Oh, oh, actual fucking surprise. Actual fucking wow. あ、<笑><笑> Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I know I'm eating, but. No, does me no. No, does me no. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, but, um,. This is something really bad just in general to fucking like spread out there. Oh, you really think that no doesn't mean like no means no, did you? Guys, whenever we're talking about clear communications in, in general, relationships, friendships, whatever, if a person says no, stop, which is fucking stop, you know? Well, whatever the fuck it is, right? You know, respect the person's fucking boundaries and whatnot. Otherwise, you're gonna catch yourself in some weird ass situations like this where it's just like, hmm. Just take the hint. Just take the hint, you know? <laughs> all, my, all my red flags are fucking raising immediately from this statement. Like, mmm. <laughs> Actually, remove the sexual element, the sexual harassment from Ara Arakun, and guess what? You actually have a character that doesn't need sexual points just for the lols, and a character that's actually gone through a lot of shit and trauma to be able to grow, rather than using fucking sexual harassment and molestation even as a point to be like, wow, isn't this character quirky? You have a character that's worth more growing in certain, in like the terms of their trauma and relationships and friendships, than like, oh, let me go ahead and raise up this little kid and do weird shit, right? Usually, people already show nonverbal signs 
before the true Rick Week. Absolutely true. A lot of people show like the nonverbals as well. But also, if someone like verbally states it, that's even a bigger sign, right? So you're saying, oh, oh, Ace of Flame. I know that there's people out there that do. Oof, oof. Wait, 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 hold on. Was that a Final Fantasy XII fucking crystal? That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Fucking... Uh, <laughs> Reminds me of the Final Fantasy XII fucking save crystals, dude. That's That's legit sick. They're like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm forgiving everything else just for this one thing. Uh, that's Japan for you. The best writers are also the biggest creeps at times. It's, it actually makes me question, right? Um, in, in terms of media, and I guess this, this is one thing I can go ahead and reflect out there. Because you guys already know I've been a part of the series starting with Bakuman and Guitar going through. Of course, I say some statements just to bring out like the general thoughts of like, uh, you know, how do people, would people react to certain things? But let's say that there's a normalization of the sexual elements that they try and portray off like this, right? Either the creepiness, the stalking, the uh, peeping toms or whatever, right? Do you think that the more that it's present in media in general, in books, novels, whatnot, and not in a way in which like it's looked down upon, i.e. societal expectations being placed on them, but more like amplified, like, oh, this is normal. This is what characters do. It brings a sense of normalcy for people. To just accept that as reality, i.e. the more anime that we watch with all these sexual elements, the more normal it seems and the more that we're able to get past these elements that beforehand we would be able to call out and be like, that's pretty fucking weird. Because of the exposure, the amount of normalcy that we're being sent to see constantly by um, all the things that we're watching. What do you guys think off of, off of that? Because that's, that's a big thing in general, right? Because like, who's... Who and what narrative are people showing constantly, right? I remember when I first started with ReZero, even, like, the smallest sexual elements, you know, I was calling out. And then, like, after Moshko Tensei and Prison School, a lot of the series that we're watching, a lot of that's been normalified to a point where you're still able to call it out, or I'm still able to call it out. But it's like, oh, yeah, it's just an anime thing. It's just an anime moment. And it's like you become numb to it in a weird way, shape, or form where you normalize uh, the setting or actions to it. And it's like, hmm. Hmm. For me, that's raising a lot of, like, internal uh, questions in terms of, like, if we're to the point now, yeah, if, if, if we're to the point now where we can normalize certain actions and we're able to say, oh, yeah, that's normal for that character. That character would totally go ahead and do that and we don't bat an eye to it. But yet, you know... In the future, what would we see as normal, or what? Where do we, where do we find those like lines, those like from crossing, right? Personal or or not personal? Sorry, I know that this might be a little bit too too deep of or like too loaded of a question, because trust me, I know. Uh, but I I just find situations and stuff like this interesting overall. And also, hold on, why is my fucking Oh, of course, my quality's dropping. There you go. To me, it's a difference between knowing it's fiction and acceptable as real behavior, but I can see people getting the line burns. Yeah, I've been chicken. And, like, that's the thing is, and I want to clarify this, right? Because a lot of people do know it's fiction, but there's a difference between knowing it's fiction, right, and then accepting the normalcy of fiction, because that's, that's already an, another big thing, right? Like, with your own personal thoughts of a character and letting your personal... For example, as a therapist... If I was hearing the stories, I'm sorry, but I would start calling, you know, Child Protective Services, especially about this person. Like, let's say both of these are real people immediately, right? Uh, you Like, if they're real people, it's like a one thing that, like, you would jump and you're like, uh, no. But at what point, for example, are you start like, oh, it's at, it's an anime moment, whatever. It's because we're mandated reporters. But if we're listening to this, it's like, oh, yeah, it's an anime moment. It's just anime. Yeah, it's totally normal. Does it start influencing the way that we see it? Oh, yeah, it's just an anime moment without breaking down the weirdness of that, you know? Mending the Abyss had to scrap a lot of inappropriate things from the manga to the studios to think about what's crossing the lines sometimes. True. True, Rick Week. 
I think the famous Roman poet uh, Catalyst wrote a book of courtship and straight up, oof. And it's not just anime. There's books. There's other things out there. But as a professional looking in, I'm like, hmm, what have I started to normalify because of the narrative or the perspectives of all of these writers being in line, for example, with sexualizing these like lolly looking characters, right? Or, you know, at what point do we start to normalify and like not start to be like, okay, what well, does this character have to be this way, right? And so on and so forth. The more you, you you take a step back and you look in, the more that you start to see like what approach were they trying to come from and why, you know? And oftentimes in therapy, we do this. We take a step back and we look back in. What ways are we improving um, our clients? Are they improving in their DLA scores and their therapeutic treatment goals? Or are they not? And what? why not? What's happening? So same thing with Ara Arakun. Is throughout this whole thing, it's like, hmm, hmm, I have questions. <laughs> は昨日と違って随分と真剣モードみたいですけれど。真剣モード。まあそうかもな。色々あったんだよ。ああ。まあ深くは聞きませんが。しかし荒々木さん、顔色があまり優れないのは気になりますね。あ、そうか。少し体
right? Because then you have someone that's probably going to like, you know what you know, you know, analyze it. Not his sisters, but a random little like lost ghost girl. And it's like, what is, what are we, what are we trying to get off of that, right? Someone that's probably going to try and empathize with himself and trying to learn a little bit more, uh, off of like his own little lost nature. Maybe she is trying to put him back in, like you know, make him not lost. But for me, like if I was questioning this, I'd be like, why do you, right, specifically, go to this character? What do you get out of this relationship with her, right? And why can't you get that out of others? Have you communicated that with others? Or are you just going to them for the sake of going to them? Because that's what you feel safe around. Do you feel, like, for me, this whole thing of, like, the way he's organizing people and he goes to specific people for certain things, I have to start asking now, are you afraid of losing these people and are you afraid of change? Because clearly, even, like, with your sister grabbing the curse that she got or whatever, it's like there's, like, a sense of, like, change can be scary, so he wants to keep everything under wraps and control and nice and i get it it happens in all of our life but guess what change is constantly happening right because that's just a matter of fact of life so i don't know dude i'm processing a lot and i know a lot of you guys are like ah like in the discord already chat meals what's up dude how you doing how's your day been how's your sunday are you getting ready for the holidays dude okay hold on i tried to download um i didn't download wild rift i downloaded the other one there was another like uh, here I'll, I'll pull it up just because I was like, I need to understand a little bit of like, not not the exact mechanics, but just like mechanics of not being trash. It was like Legends Mobile or whatever. Oh, your friends are here in town. Just to like get to like know a little bit of like, okay, what is up? What is midfield? What is like jungling? So on and so forth. Like some of the basic mechanics. Absolute garbage. But I'm trying to get better at that before I jump into Wild Rift. <laughs> but friends are in town. Yeah, Mobile Legends, there you go. You know exactly what I was talking about. But oof. Alright, guys. Anyway. だけど、なんかあいつらはガキだっていうか、人の話なんか全然聞かないんだもん。今回のことだって、あいつらが大人しくしているうちに蹴りをつけなきゃ。大人しくか。あちくじ、人はいつ大人になるんだろうな。ん
the way that she actually is able to go out and challenge ideals. You want a partner that's able to go out and like improve your life, challenge you a little bit, push you forward, set their boundaries, talk about certain things, right? You don't want someone that's just going to be your therapist. Excluding the staples in the mouth. People hate Sanjo or hate or love her. There's no in between. It just takes a while. Been chicken. No, fair. fair. And that's the reason why I'm asking this. Like, because it's, it's interesting questions to think about. It's like, for example, you think about these characters. You're like, wait a minute. I really like this character and I really hate this character. But what needs do they have particularly that you like that you may be looking for in your own life? And you take that off and you start reflecting on it. And I think this is a beauty, beautiful aspect off of this show that like I don't think it gets a lot of credit is the fact that even though we're only watching conversation happens, a lot of times all of this is like very introspective, reflective moments that are hidden in lores of like supernatural elements and conversations off of like one super horny individual, right? Doesn't a therapist also challenge you? Well, there there's a difference between like, for example, with Haji Kuji, and by this I meant the generalization of what a therapist is, right? Because a good therapist is going to challenge you. But sadly, there are a lot of bad therapists out there, Punyash, who are literally just like talk therapists um, and like who are like just vent boxes where you just go and you vent to and they don't challenge you in your ideals. They don't challenge you with your own ideals back to you. And oftentimes people like go to that, like they crave to that, like um, to a partner that's just like, open to hearing them vent 99% of the time instead of having someone that's like trying to better their life. And that's why it's like, hmm. Because even as a therapist, uh, like other therapists challenge me. I challenge other therapists. Brady and I are constantly trying to improve ourselves, right? Uh, either by, by us or by external knowledge, right? And that's how it should be. But just being in an echo chamber or in an event where like you're just able to vent, sometimes it's needed, don't get me wrong, um, into the wind and just have that rephrase back to you. Yes, it can cause introspective moments, but at times you have to wonder like, how far are you willing to take it, right? And at what point does it become a burden to others? Because Oshino, the way that I think Oshino was seeing it is like, our man is overstepping at times. Granted, he he did leave a big hole for, for a, like a gap, but it's like a natural course thing where it's like, if you did nothing, if everyone just kept living their life and kept trying to like interfere, who knows what might have happened, right? But the fact is that we have a white knight savior that often does it to try and save others that he genuinely cares about, ends up in situations where, you know, I guess like change is a constant, even when he's trying to go ahead and like make sure that everyone is safe. And what comes of a moment where you can't save everyone? Being a therapist friend is exhausting. Mm hmm. Oh, absolutely it is. Uh, like, it gets to a point where it becomes a burden. Like, if you're the therapist friend or if you're, like, the venting friend, it get, can get to a point where your relationship with others is a burden because you already know that they just want to go ahead and use you for that one thing, right? And that's why boundaries are so important. And, and if a friend keeps doing this to you and you're like, dude, all right, you know what? You need to go see, like, a professional. Always point them out in, like, you know, to seek out mental help because being that friend or whatnot can, or, like, it can ruin your friendship. It can ruin a lot of friendships. <laughs> あ、そうですね。そうでした。あの方は私のことが嫌いなのでした。でも、荒木さん、お元気で。お前こそな。しかし、この時僕は知らなかったのだ。この先、八九時迷いという名前のあの平田のいい少女の身に一体何が起こる
So why do I feel like we're a couple episodes away from this changing? Like, I, I don't know why. I feel like we're like, we're about to get a weird perspective change and it's about to go from one sister to the other. Just because of the way that they've been emphasizing this. Hmm. I don't know. Um, but yes, the thing is, therapists aren't really supposed to give a... No, that's a life coach. If someone gives you advice, that's a life coach, right? We help navigate and process whatever direction. Yep, absolutely true, Brady. I was like, the moment that someone gives you advice, that's a life coach or a case manager. <laughs> Not really a therapist, man. Brady, I don't think their friend is a therapist in general. I think it's just like uh, <laughs> general people seeking out others to vent and whatnot. But yeah, honestly, just for friend from the therapeutic approach altogether, unless you're a professional, even if you're a professional, you shouldn't be giving out um, advice to friends, right? Uh, we joke about it, but we're not like, there, there. ねえ、原木君。たまたま持ち歩いていた百本の尖った鉛筆が何かの弾みで第三者に刺さってしまったとしても、それは事故というものよね。いや、事件だ。大事件だ。鉛筆で人を殺した試験が三面トップを飾る
ってことは戦場ヶ原お前あれかこの番号に電話して怪奇と話したのかええあの男まるで変わってなかったわね心機臭いったらないわ僕もついていっていいか怪奇と話をつけるなら僕も一緒に今なら聞かなかったことにしてあげてもいいわよ、うん、死にたくなければ全言撤回なさい妹がな怪奇の被害に遭ったんだよ囲い火鉢とかいうわけのわからん怪を無理やりに押し付けられて高熱にうなされている Because here's my thing is, personally, if you were Senju Gahara, would you want Ara Arakun as your partner? And that's sort of what I'm thinking about. Seeing, like, especially knowing everything that, that we know. For me, I'm going to go with, like, a strong no on that one. You know, like, because at what point? It's a lot of, like, it's like, an, it's like a project. And I hate, I hate using this fucking term, right? But, like, a, a project on maturity and, like, going from pessimism to optimism or going from, um, you know, trying to save everyone to trying to work on yourself. Which, at this case, for me, it's a lot. Like, I'm sorry, but, like, if, yeah. You know, it, it, it's some, well, that's, then, Punia, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta ask this. Is she smitten just because of the savior complex or the paratactic distortion that forms from it? Right? Because oftentimes in life or death or extreme scenarios, you have trauma bonding in other scenarios like that that pop up. Or in a real life scenario, if the curse or nothing was, was involved like that, would he still have gotten, like, caught her attention? And that's sort of where the, where the two start. If you're here, thank you for the gift sub bonfire. Oh, forecast. All right, 56% of you said that she's better with Ara Arakun, and 44% of you said by herself. That's interesting. Okay. So it's, it's still kind of close. It's still kind of close. Ah. Now, I'm going to be able to get the same thing. I'm going to be able to get the same thing. I'm going to be able to get the same thing. I'm going to be able to get the same thing. I'm going to be able to get the same thing. I'm going to be able to get the same thing. I'm going to be able to get the same thing. I'm going to be able to get the same thing. I'm going to be able to get the same thing. <laughs> but yes, you sure about that? Because I feel a lot of people would to are totally down to be stepped on by a dami mommy. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, like for me personally, it's. And, and even vice versa, right? The amount of times that he spends with others and he sexualizes others. I'd start, I'd start bringing into question, like, why aren't you in a relationship with the other people that you're so clearly into and sexualize, right? And spend time and try and be their savior versus, like, say, growing and maturing in the relationship that you're in, right? Or when boundaries are called out, yeah, things change for a little bit, but then you relapse back into the same old habits. Granted, relapsing is a part of normal, like, change in behavior patterns and you know, the whole fucking thing. But there's a lot of questioning that, you know, starts happening. And as a therapist in couples counseling, I'd question this relationship almost immediately. This is one of the few relationships where, like, you know, it'd be like, okay, so what drives you guys to one another? You know, what what differences would you like for there to be or changes to happen or communication patterns to change? And I think Brady would probably be on board in the same line of questioning here where it comes to, like, you know, what power dynamic is at play here and why, right? How did this relationship come to form and why? And where do you see it going? What are their goals? And what boundaries have been violated? And you can ask 101 questions off of this, right? And it's like, how do you genuinely see yourself? Do you see that as your partner? Or do you see that as, like, someone that you got in a relationship with just because they asked to be in a relationship with you? So you settled. And 101 other things. But anyway. お前が怪奇と一人で対決しようなんて馬鹿げてる。違うか。別に荒垣君のためだけという<笑> 
あれはツンデレッタなのツンデレッタってお前そんな風に5人の詐欺師の全員に復讐でもする気かもう終わったことだろうお前がつけなければならない決着は他にあるんじゃないのかまさか5人の詐欺師と言ってもねお野さんの言葉じゃないけれど私は被害者面をするつもりはないの<笑>こちらから頼って裏切られたんだからそれで逆恨みしようってほど私の人格は私の人格は私の人格はともかくとして筋を外すこと、so、<笑>ないのだな<笑>だけど回帰だけは別どうしてお父さんとお母さんの離婚を促したのが回帰だからよ<笑>もちろん全てを回帰のせいにはできないしするつもりもないけれどあの男は私たち家族をもてあそんだそれは許せないことなのそれを許してしまうと Thanks so much for the stretch, Rick. <laughs> カイキがいなくともお父さんとお母さんはきっと離婚したと思う。私たち家族はバラバラになっていたと思う。お母さんがいなくなったのは私のせいだと思う。でもね、荒木くん。だからって悪意を持って捜されたことをどうせ結果は
does a fake become real? Where do you draw the lines? Is it can a fake can a fake faking be more real than a real reeling? And I know it sounds fucking dumb. I know, right? But there are we have a common saying, right? Fake it till you make it. Um, or even worse, we have some really weird, ironic sayings in our society in general, which is like, oh, you got to do your best to be successful. You know, you, you got to like bust your ass and like do everything, but only a handful will truly be successful. You know, like we, we have like these weird like ironies in there where even some of the best fakers in the world, you know, can be more real than the real thing. So, for example, right. You have individuals who are extremely charismatic who might actually get a position as like on the board CEO or whatever, who might not have the experience to actually run a company compared to another individual who's not as charismatic. And he just got there just by faking it his entire way up. There are situations out there where shit like that happens. And you're like, at what point does someone who has faked it become more real than a real person or a real person that like tried? That's deep. And that's a, that's a lot to take in. Yeah. Like, and, and it happens. A, a lot of people don't seem to, to even realize that, right? Like, it happens a lot. Like, we have AI art, if we're going to be realistic about it, right? Um, if people without, like, if someone created it and didn't mention that they were doing, like, AI art, right? I'm pretty sure that AI art would sell. Would sell pretty well. And all of a sudden, you'd have, like, a mixture of, like, what is fake and what is real. Is a fake, you know, whatever more real than real art is it art at that point right and then what, what's the difference between that as art and you know people actually doing art and that's you can go on and on and on about that like you know like the end product the resolve of an individual putting an effort to do certain things versus the machine spitting it out and 101 other aspects but like if you were to just present this to like normies regular people what would they usually go for? What would they see as cool or interesting? Mm-hmm. Pretending to be a doctor during the whole war, he was learning from books and on the field patients. Oh, fuck, Evan. Oh, fuck. But that's, again, that, that sort of brings up like the main question here. And it's like, I don't know. I just treat everyone by like their own role that they're sort of giving each other their... Did they crumbless? Oh fuck. Also, what's up, dude? Hope you're doing well. よりよくのお金を引き出すため。今は中学生相手の小遣い稼ぎに勤しんでるらしいぜ。それを防ごうとして、うちの妹は そういや、知ってんだったな。言っておくけれど荒木君、私の印象では、怪奇の不吉に正義は通用しないわよ。ナマステ、マイフレンド。荒木君は正義だけあって、偽善には強くとも、悪人には弱い。だから正義じゃね
it is what it is. It doesn't affect him. He's just doing it just for the sake of doing it, right? Because ultimately, he needs to eat. Ultimately, he needs to survive. He needs to be able to, like, whatever, right? He saw a market, and he took the opportunity for it. But at the same time, he's not the one that's directly, like, doing it. Someone had to come and ask for it. So does that make him bad for being the middleman when he's just offering his services? And that's a real fucking deep question here because oftentimes I feel like the middleman gets a lot of shit, but not the people that are going in here and requesting services. And it's like, if you want to cause change, right? Yeah, okay, let's say you got rid of this middleman. Who's to say another person won't come and replace it? Who's to say that we're not going to see, like, oh, shit, <laughs> it just popped up finally. <laughs> All right, hold on. Okay. Oh, Kaiki's clearly... He's clearly doing it for the money, dude. Clearly he's doing it for the money. But I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, what, what's not going to stop, like, say, other apparitions or other people from coming in? Let's say Kaiki leaves and filling in this void. Who's not to say that we're not going to have, like, a harpy lady or a slime girl or a fucking, like, dragon maid or some stupid thing come in and try and fill in the void that Kaiki leaves, right? Why are you getting mad at me? You're the one that asked for it, which is true. Which is true, and that's why I'm like, hmm, how much of an impact does, and also, if Kaiki lead, leaves, are we getting better or worse people to come? And a hundred and other things. Batsu,与えるだけよ。現代社会において、それは同じことだ。戦場があら、お前は知らないのかもしれないけどさ、僕はお前を愛してるんだよ。たとえお前が犯罪者になって、刑務所に収容されても。毎日面会に行くくらい。だけど、どうせならいつでも一緒にいたり、うっかりするとどうしてお前と付き合っているのかわからなくなってしまうけれど、理由なんか必要ないくらいお前が好きだ。what what about them drives you to be with them? Not just love, because that doesn't sound like love. That sounds a lot more like lust, right? I love you so much, I don't need a reason. That's like often like a fucking red trigger flag uh, whenever I see someone that like is just there just for being there, you know? Um, I'm listening, like, I'm listening to all of this shit, and I'm like, that's not a good reason, dude. Like, I, I, you know, I'm with my partner because they listen to me, because they care about me, because... You know, I see myself growing old with them. I see the fact that we can contribute a lot to each other's life and grow. Um, I love you so much. It's like... Uh, okay, well, hold on. And then you gotta flip it. It's like, how do you define love in that case? And what makes your relationship special, right? For example, what, what do you specifically like about her, right, that she does? And if it's just like, oh, being there with you then how come we don't really see that often? We see you more being with other characters than it is being there with her. And it's like, are you just, oh, I have a lot of questions for Ara Araku, and I would, I would try and decimate this person. You should be able to at least name 10 reasons why you love someone. Well, like, not even just that. It's like, for example, what truly makes you stay in a relationship? What makes you work for your relationship that you do have? And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, never mind. Oh, you're good, dude. あなたを好きでいられる。あなたの言う通りにしましょう。じゃあ、会議のところに一緒に連れて行ってくれるのか。ええ。ただしその代わり一つだけお願いがあれば。お願いという甘えた言い方が嫌いなら条件でもいいけれど脅されてないわよ。脅されてるの、羽川に。そこがどこであろうと羽川さんの前では正座するのが当然でしょう。どこであろうとですか。羽川さんが羽川さんが髪を切ったように。そうやってあの子が前に進んだように私は怪奇と
自分の過去と決別するつもり私も前に進むわでだからお願いって何なんだよどうすれば僕を一緒に連れて行ってくれるんだ今はまだ言えないわね言えないようなことなのかよ怪奇との対決を終えてからその結果がどうであれその時に言うことにする、うんうん、だったら今言っても同じだろう、うん、今言ったら伏線にならないじゃない伏線なのかよそう荒木君の死後私はそのお願いをこの場面で口にしなかったことを後悔しながら一人で生きていくの僕が死ぬような伏線なのかそうそしてクライマックスシーンでは重要なアイテムとして誕生日に荒木君からもらった天体望遠鏡が使われるのよ天体望遠鏡が使われるようなイベントなんかねえよいいから今言え伏線なんか知るかそう言うならこの話はなしよ分かったよそれでいいそうならば一緒に行きましょう互いを守り合いましょう Dude her back must fucking be in terrific shape Every fucking shot that she does, like, hold on, hold on, what are we doing with this? What she does doing this with her fucking head, dude? Holy fuck. <laughs> the shaft head, so her back is made of rubber, dude. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 今回は荒木君に私のお願いを聞いてもらうためだもの。嘘はつくかもしれないけれど、約束は守るわよ。そうか。It's a standard procedure if you want to shift it by. <笑>これは取引よ。それに。さすがの私もやや眠い。荒木君も気を失っていた時間があるとはいえ徹夜でしょ。とてもじゃないけれど、怪奇は寝ぼけた頭で相手のできる詐欺師ではないわ。まあ。睡眠に関しては我慢の気候なんだけどな。もっと吸血鬼の体質で。でも寝ておきなさいな。今夜、眠れるとは限らないのだから。えい、えい、えいよ。お兄ちゃんああ、起きたのか。えいえいえいよ。クエスチョンマーク。おはよう。ないのかあいつが行きそうな場所の心当たりないよ怪奇って人のところだとは思うけれどでもそもそもその人の居場所がわからないんだもんってことは、うん、カレンちゃんは怪奇の居場所を知ってるのか知らないはず一度逃がしてるんだし、うん、僕が探してくれ、うん、お前はうちで待っていろでも私も探しにお前じゃカレンちゃんと会った時逆に説得されてしまう危険がある本当に信用してないんだね信用してないでも心配はしているでもそれ以上に怒ってんだよ考えろ僕がカレンだったらどうするまず家から離れようとするだろう見つかったら連れ戻されるんだからそれは最低条件でそして問題はそれからだそれからそれからそれからうるさいの<笑>騒がしくて眠れやせんわお前様が動揺すればその動揺はダイレクトにわしに伝わる That would suck If you get anxious it goes directly to her Hey yo <laughs> If you're feeling depressed it goes directly to her So your emotional moods directly start impacting her Oh fuck <laughs> 状況は分かってるかおおむねのまったくお前様に負けずを取らず無手の男じゃな His horniness as well? Damn, dude ああそういえばわしも迷子になったところお前様に探してもらったことがあったかも懐かしいや懐かしいや協力してくれるかって聞いていいかっか残念ながら今のわしはお前様に逆らうことのできん立場でな主従関係は複雑であろうと力関係ではお前様の方が上ちゃう
ゃいやじゃ何が悲しいってこんなどうでもいい過当な人間ごときに従わねばならないブラーそんな風に狂犬を発動されてしまえば仕方ないのまったくお前様はわしがおらねば何にもできんやじゃいやはやどうしようもないやじゃの妹子の血はお前様の血と構造的に似たようなものじゃならばわしにはその匂いでおおよその場所はつかむことができるうんどうやらそこまで離れた場所ではないようじゃなフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフンフン At this point, I just think Shinobu as a character is actually intriguing. Like her resolve, the fact that, like, you know, she, she's been growing a lot. She's been, she took a lot of Oshino's personal, uh, you know, lore, I guess, and has been able to go through that. So I'm like, Shinobu is, is a character that I'm like, I'm more and more intrigued as, as like we keep progressing through. Man, I. I have a lot to say on Ara Arakun, but I'm waiting for stuff to like fly on by, to keep progressing, to keep going, to keep whatnot. And I'm also really curious to see what's going to happen down the road. Like, specifically, for example, how is his relationship with his siblings going to go? How close are they going to get, right? Because there's some, 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 some siblings that cross a lot of boundary lines. We're not even going to, we're not even going to lie about it. Or not even gonna lie about it. There are some siblings who would like quite literally do like everything together, and there needs to be those boundaries that are set. So I'm curious, like, are we gonna see more of a progression to like how they are as siblings, where they're growing, uh, you know, and especially a lot of things are in the air. Yeah, I know. And like, where specifically his relationship with Sanjogahara is gonna go. Like, as someone looking in, I could probably, like, throw a dart and be like, in the future, they're, they're probably going to break up. They probably should break up in some way, shape, or form. But that's just me, like, looking long-term and, like, throwing a dart and being like, huh, this could probably happen. But anyway, guys, I'm, I'm, I don't know. For me, this show has a lot, a lot of good opportunities, a lot of good shit, a lot of good, um, how do I put it? A lot of good sense of... Like, they sort of knew what character tropes or how they were writing each character and the way that they were building out this world to have impact. So, hmm. I have a weird presence in my heart that what we're going to get is in this series is probably going to be like one of those things where it's not really like a good, bad, good or bad ending. It's just like a introspective ending because I feel like that's what the Guitari series really is. It's just like you got to have a lot of internal questions for yourself, you know?